少，因人心，卡埃拉人，阿萨卡哈拉人，扎卡拉人，少爱因人心。Namaste. So, everyone in modern life is affected by atheism. Atheism and nihilism, or nihilism, depending on which side of the pond you come from, are endemic. I mean, talk about you know an epidemic or a pandemic. Atheism is far worse than any virus, <laughs> and it's everywhere. It's all pervasive. You look around the internet, and you read stuff, and and watch movies and whatever, and there is no mention of God anywhere. So even among spiritual types. You know, it's not cool to talk about God anymore. Well, I don't, I don't care. You know, God is real, and I'm going to prove it to you three different ways, and each of those ways is immediately verifiable in your experience. So, are you ready? <laughs> okay. This figure is called an ontological triple. Or an RDF triple, but anyway, it's a triple. And the three spheres represent the subject, the object, and the relationship. Now, these three elements are necessary to have an experience, for something to be real, for you. There has to be a subject, that's you. There has to be an object, that's the thing that you're aware of, and there has to be a relationship. Otherwise, you can't be aware of that object. So these three elements are there in every experience and every manifestation and every reality and everything. Huh? Can't escape it. Only in Brahman is there oneness. Everything else is triple. Okay, so now let's take a look at another triple. What is the basic experience or the basic fact of existence? It's awareness, isn't it? Without awareness, you would not even know that you exist. So, <laughs> Ramana Maharshi used to ask people, "Do you exist? <laughs> Are you real?" And of course, they would say, "Oh yeah, of course I exist." And he would say, "Well, then, what's the proof?" And they would say something about, "Well, I experience the world, therefore I'm real." But no, that's not the proof. This would start a conversation like a Socratic dialogue <laughs> that finally ends with the conclusion: We are aware of our awareness. We are aware that we are aware. This is the proof of our existence. Nothing else. What else could there be? So just stop and consider this for a minute. <laughs> you're aware, and you're aware that you're aware. You're conscious, and you're conscious of your consciousness. This is an amazing thing, because this awareness of one's awareness is the prime quality of Brahman. See, we say, "Aham Brahmasmi." What does that mean? It means I'm aware of being aware. 
I am made up of Brahman. I am nothing but Brahman. I am aware that I am aware. Therefore, see, because Aham Brahmasmi is actually a duplication. Aham means I am. Brahma means Brahman and Asmi also means I am. So the real meaning is I am. I am aware that I am. Therefore, I am Brahman. Okay, now that's the subject. <laughs> now let's talk about the object. The object is the world. Once we're aware that we're aware, then our awareness can go and look at different objects. And this is like reaching out from the self into the world. Now, what is this world? Huh? Why is there anything? There doesn't have to be. Brahman is perfectly self-sufficient. But because we see the world, as Ramana Maharshi says, therefore God exists. Because how else could the world be unless there's a God to create it? Just go ask any tree, <laughs> any stone, any piece of earth or rock, who created you? How did you come into being? You probably won't get much of an answer. That means something else, some other agency created that thing. How did planets and stars and solar systems and galaxies and all that come into existence? Well, the scientists have a bunch of crazy theories <laughs> which they cannot ever verify because they all involve going back to the beginning of the Big Bang or whatever they, they want to call it. It can never be verified because that happened in the ancient past and we can't travel in time. Uh, that theory will never be proven, can never be proven by definition because we can't construct an experiment to prove it, nor can we compare it to anything else. So it's just empty words. It's just baloney. <laughs> but what is real? The world is there, isn't it? See this wall? That's real. It didn't make itself. Or you say, well, some people made it. Yeah, and who made them? This is called a regression. A regression leads back to the source. And the source has to be an intelligent being, a being with power, Shakti. So that's the second proof of God. And then the third, what is the relationship between Brahman or Shiva and the world or Shakti? Consciousness. Consciousness is the awareness of an object. Awareness all by itself is not consciousness. And objects all by themselves are not conscious. But when Brahman becomes aware of objects, whether in the form of pure Brahman, Kevala Brahman, or in the form of an individual, Brahman covered with Upadis, See, now this is the third proof of the existence of God. Well, how is that? <laughs> consciousness can be conscious of consciousness. It can be conscious of itself. It can be reflexive. It can be self-referentially aware. So this is a wonderful thing. This is the awareness or the line of thinking that brought me or to, led me to discover independently the secret of the golden flower. Back in 2005, I was sitting on a park bench in Mexico City 
And I was marveling at the fact that a consciousness, huh, which is a non-physical entity, an a priori existence that does not require the existence of the world, how can this transcendental entity be aware of matter? How can we be aware of the material world? And I began to contemplate this. I began to contemplate the nature of my own consciousness. And I found myself filled with bliss. And this experience is the third proof of the existence of God. See, all these are experiences. I experience awareness. I experience the world. And I experience consciousness. My awareness can be aware of itself. My consciousness can be conscious of itself. And there has to be a third entity that creates the world, and that's Shakti. So really, when we're talking about these three, we're talking about Shiva, Brahman, or Nirguna Brahman, Shakti, Saguna Brahman, Brahman with qualities, and Atma, the self. The self is who is aware of the world. Now, don't we all experience these things every minute, every day? <laughs> How can anybody say there is no God? How is it possible to even think like that? You have to be like missing a part of your brain or something. You know, and, and even if you want to bring in science, scientific method means you make a theory, you postulate a theory, and then you go looking for evidence and I think we just gave sufficient evidence to prove our theory that actually there is a God and he is you and everything else and that Shakti, the emanation from God, the energy of God, the power of God is the world and that the consciousness of them is the being, the individual, the Atma soul. So here we have a wonderful form of Shiva and Shakti together. This is called Aradhani Ishwara. And this form means that Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman are not separate. And it also means that the existence of the individual, Atma, is illusory. It's Maya. It's simply Brahman covered by Upadis, blocking off its supreme, unlimited nature. But the process of yoga and meditation, the purpose of it is to release these Upadis and to experience the self in its true nature. And that is the true meaning of self-realization. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung.